have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to Joshua 11. Go ahead and turn to Joshua 11, and, and we're going to pick back up. If you if you joined us yesterday, we were in already in Joshua 11, and we, we talked a lot about, about getting back up. Hey, God, God has taken us back to one of, one of the enemies that we released out of our mouth, said, hey, we, we can't do that. We can't defeat that. And God showed the Israelites, no, you can't. Watch what I'm getting ready to do. And we we begin to uh, unpack that. But I wanted, there's another text in chapter 11. God was saying, hey, take your time. I really want you to unpack this for the people. And that's where we're going to spend our time at today. So if you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn to Joshua 11. I'm going to be reading from the CSB. Joshua 11, verse 23. Joshua 11, verse 23. And, and it, it reads right here, family. It says, so Joshua took the entire land in keeping with all that the Lord had told Moses. Joshua then gave it as an inheritance to Israel according to their tribal allotments. After this, here, here's the powerful part, family. After this, the land had rest from war. God, God is now, God is now transitioning. From a period, he's transitioning the Israelites from a period of warring to now a period of resting. He's transitioning them now to, to now just to, to steward the very thing that they just possessed. They're, they're, they're learning how to rest. And they're, 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 this is what we're going to be talking about today. That they're going to learn how to rest. That resting is actually a gift from God. We, we could go all the way back to Genesis. Come on, Genesis chapter 2, I believe it's verse 2 and 3. It, it says by, it's the seventh day that the Lord had, he finished the work. And he said that it's good. And then on the seventh day, he did what family? He, he rested from all of his work. He made the day holy and, and he rested. Yes, we are called to work. Come on. Yes, you are called to work. Yes, you are called to war for the things that God is telling you to war for in the spirit. But God is also calling us. He said, hey, you're also called to rest. See, family, Sabbath it is the act of, of stewardship for our bodies, our minds, our souls. It, it's about practicing to rest. It, it's, it's about contemplating and, and finding the rhythms in, in, in life to actually slow down and unplug. See, studies even show us that one of the one of the a, a lot that that does with our health implications. I think that's where I, I want to go with it. Is that a lot of us don't even, we just don't know how to rest. We just don't know how to unplug. We, we just don't we don't know what it means to actually slow down. We, we live in a society where where the society is always moving us and pushing us, and and we got to go catch the next. And we don't appreciate the gift that God has given us, and that's learning how to unplug. That that's learning how to, to, to take a step back and actually unplug. So the question I began to write in, in, in my notes yesterday, that the question is, why is it so hard for all of us, including me, <laughs> why is it so hard for us to get off the treadmill, the, the, the treadmill that's called work? Why is it so hard for us to constantly keep working, constantly keep going, constantly keep warring? We can see right here that we just read through Joshua, and that's a lot of warring that they were doing. That they were in a season where they had to go conquer the very promises that God has given them. But that's not it. God has said now it's a time to actually rest from war, to actually unplug, look around, and say, man, this is good. This is good. And now steward the very thing that God has given you. Sometimes we're moving so quick because we're trying to be productive that God, that we don't know we don't know how to steward the very blessing that's already in our life. And this is why I want to take our time today to talk to talk about an issue that I believe a lot of us struggle with. Come on. A lot of us struggle with this. My, my goal today is, is to bring to our attention about the gift to enter into true rest. 
I, I want to explore it in, in, in a way through a, a biblical perspective of where we can see God's truth about this very important matter. Yes, resting is a beautiful thing for us to be more productive, but I really want to teach it from a biblical perspective. I want to teach it and find the principles because if you're taking notes, here, here's my first point. I'm going to get into it quick because I, I think it's going to be a lot of note taking with this. My first point is this. Sabbath. S Sabbath it, it is a gift to us all. Sabbath is a gift to us all. That's my first number point. It is a reminder that Sabbath is, is, is not a reward, family, for hard work. It's not a reward for hard work. It's, it's a gift. I want you to catch that. It's not a reward for hard work. It is a gift to all of us that God wants us to embrace. Sabbath is not based on work first. Mm, no, it's not. Sabbath is not based on work first. It's based on relationship. You cannot earn it. It is a gift given to us by God. See, maybe you've been exposed, or can I take you back? Maybe you grew up in society, in your household, in your environment, that, hey, you got to get these chores done. And, and when you eventually get these chores done, now you can take rest. But that's not what God is teaching here. If I can even prove it, and even in his, his scriptures in Genesis, watch this. Because in Genesis, God created mankind on day what? Day number six. He created mankind on day number six. He told them what? He gave them an assignment. He said, Adam and Eve, hey, go be fruitful and multiply on day number six. God then, he gave them, he gave them an assignment. And what's the day after that? Day number seven. He gave them, he, 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 he created them. And then they moved into what? A day of rest. They didn't even have time to get to work. God said, hey, here's my gift. You're here now. You hear the assignment. You hear the assignments for your life. Now I need you to come rest with me. Mm. I believe that's powerful. And you say, "What? Well, why is that powerful? I believe that's powerful because that, that, that lets us know that God desired for us to take rest in him. That there's something powerful inside the gift of resting, my friend. There's powerfulness in there. When you rest, there's this power, there's something that God wants to share. It is a, it's a gift to embrace it, to draw closer to God, not to draw away from God. It is a gift not based on your hard work. It is not a gift based on your accomplishments. It is not a gift based on what you can produce in life. No, my friend, the Sabbath is actually, you know what, God? I'm setting this up as rhythms in my life. See, here's the thing. Maybe you can't take you know, like the Jewish Sabbath, which is a full 24 hours. And I'm not going to get too much into teaching of that because I want to stay on the principle real quick. But what I do want to what I do want to share is learning how to take small Sabbath in your life. How are you unplugging? Are you just constantly on that treadmill? You're just constantly going. I got to get this complete. I got to get that complete. You're constantly on a treadmill. And God is saying, I can't get your foot under the body of attention because you're always after the next. You're always warned for the next. You're always, you're always in the operating, in the operation room of trying to create or maneuver the net. God is saying, no, take my gifts, my friend because my gift is probably gonna show you what you're trying to go after. And we have to learn to rest in God. I believe that's something that God is looking for us to actually get better in this year. Learning the art of true resting. L learning the art of, of truly unpacking so that God can pack you up the right way. Learning the art of, okay, you know what, God, I can actually step away from this for right now and everything is going to be okay. If I can give you my second point, my second point is this. Sabbath is a reminder that our work will remain incomplete and it's okay. Let me say that again. That's a, that's a longer one. Sabbath is a reminder 
that our work will remain incomplete. And it's okay. Hear me, hear me what I'm saying. It's okay. I'm preaching to myself right now. Real, we, we have to realize that at some point, the work is still going to be unfinished. The email is not going to get finished today. The project is not going to get complete today. The laundry, maybe let's take it to chores. The laundry is not going to get complete today. Sabbath is stepping into a posture of surrender. It's hands up, arrested. <laughs> And let him take control so that you can rest. I, I, I love when uh, Pastor Brenda, she loves looking at uh, cooking shows and chef competitions. And I, I love when, when the chefs are in competition and they're, 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 they're doing their thing with the recipes and the entrees and the dishes and et cetera. And they're working and they're under the clock. And when the bell rings, what did the chef have to do? The chef has to take a step back. No more ingredients. Don't add no more spices. Uh, it, it, it's, it's not done. No, the bell has rung. Step away from the food and put your hands up. That's the word for you today, my friend. Step away from the computer. <laughs> Step away from the phone. Step away from the social media. Step, there's some things that God is saying. In, in, this, in, in this week, you have to learn that email it's not going to get complete right now. That project is not going to get complete today. You have to step away. And the reason why we have to learn and we have to practice this of putting our hands up, and I, I, I kind of love this illustration right now, I put, because I'm preaching to myself, <laughs> of putting, my, putting your hands up and stepping away. Having your hands up is saying, God, I'm surrendering. And we have to practice this because, because this, write this scripture down. Write this scripture down. Psalms 90, verse 12. Psalms 90, verse 12. It, it says this. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. We read it again, just in case you're not there. Teach us to number our days so that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Here's what it's saying. If we steward our days better, the results will, will be that we will gain wisdom for the future. There we go. If we steward our days better, God is going to give us the gift of wisdom. And a lot of times God gives that gift of wisdom when we learn how to fully unplug. That's the beautiful thing about uh, the Sabbath. That's the beautiful thing of learning in your week of creating rhythms. Hear me when I say that. Creating rhythms on how to unplug, on how not to be distracted, on how to take care of yourself. And I'm going to talk about that on, as we get a little bit further down. Because we're, we're pouring out in so many other places where we don't know how to pour into ourselves. So now you're feeding everybody else. You're taking care of everybody else. But what about you, my friend? Well, who's taking care of you? Who's pouring into you? And, and this is why self-care is so important. This is why mental health is all over the place because we have to learn the art of self-care. I'm kind of I'm getting ahead of myself, but I can feel what God is tugging on because this is a lot of, this is an area where a lot of us struggle. And sometimes I had to learn, I'm still learning, my God. I'm learning that, hey, in order for, for my relationships in life, in order for me to be a better husband, to be a better father, to be a better leader, a pastor, I, I, I have to take care of I so that I can take care of we. Come on. And if we don't take care of I, there won't be no we. There won't, no, won't be no leader. Come on. And so we have to pour into ourselves. And God is saying your, 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 your output is outweighing your input. Mm. And so now you can only pour from what goes in. And so many of us, we're running, we're draining, we're tired, we're frustrating. And God is saying, no, we're in it for the longevity. So now you have to, you have to embrace the gift of taking a rest. Embrace the gift of unplugging. This is Israel. This is why we're setting this hold up, setting everything up. Yes, they had a season of warring. 
but God is now teaching them a season of rest. My third point is this. My third point is this. Sabbath reminds us, reminds us presence over production. Excuse me. Reminds us presence over production. You hear me? Presence <laughs> over production. I felt like God said, hey, say it again for yourself, Anthony. Presence <laughs> over production. Production is a beautiful thing. It's a great thing. We, we, we all want production. But God is saying no presence is more important. See, society can teach us if we rest proper, then we can be more productive. And that is very true. That is very true. That, that's, the, that, that's, one, that's one true essence of productivity. But from a biblical perspective, we don't rest to be more productive. We, we, we rest so productivity does not become an idol. Yes, there we go. We, 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 we don't rest so, so that we can take a break so that we can go back at it. That, and and that's, that's, a true, that's a true element in life. I'm not disowning that. I'm, I'm not disowning that. You need a rest because if you're not resting, your mind not going to be shot. If you don't rest Anthony over the weekend, you don't know what you're going to be preaching when you get on that stage on Sunday. You, resting is a, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. But the biblical perspective, or can I say the top priority that has to stay at the top, and this is why, because Product, productivity can easily become idols in our life. Your life is it, your life is more than what you produce, my friend. Your life is more than what you accomplish. Your life is more than what you possess. And if we keep the Sabbath, then God would teach us how to reject and resist the idol of productivity. And this is a space that a lot of us live in. Where we're, we're, we measure ourselves based on productivity. Come on. We, we measure ourselves. Come on. I'm, I'm man to man. Let me talk to my fellas in here. Come on. We measure ourselves up. Look what I bring to the table. Look at the bacon I put on the, ta on, on the table. And if that bacon ain't, ain't, ain't at that percentage of what it was in one season, it might look different in another season. Hear me today. God, if your identity is not based on what you can produce. Producing is something great, and we can give a lot of scriptures to, to, uh, to actually confirm that. But our identity is found in Christ. And Christ saying, my presence with you and I is what's more important. And then only to actually catch the true wisdom of, of, of who God is calling us to be. So that now we can actually walk in those patterns and go complete the very thing that God is calling us to do. We have to learn how to unplug so that we can plug into him. Mm, here we go. That, that's what Sabbath is all about. Because now we live in a society, I'm bringing it back here because these are two worlds that's always colliding. And, and God is saying, you, the world society is always showing you, hey, you have to make sure you're producing. You have to make sure that you're accomplished. You have to make sure that you're possessing. You got to go get that next degree. You got to go start that next business. You got to go meet these next set of people. You're always on that treadmill <laughs> that never stops. And now it becomes productivity over presence. Sabbath is a day to be present in his presence. Sabbath is a day to be present in his presence and others. You have to add that in there. You, you, you cannot study and, and teach rest and, and not add in others. You, you got you, we, we have to teach the whole truth. Because when, when, when God gave them this principle, he didn't, he didn't go tell them to go live in isolation. And yes, you have to find pockets where you feel yourself. Come on, introverts. Come on, come on. But also, God also instructed them to stay in the community because they gleaned from one another. They broke bread with one another. They took, they took communion with one another. They were, they were not by themselves. Mm -mm -mm. They were in community. See, this is why I'm bringing it back up. This is why self-care is important. Self-care is important. I'm making sure, you know what, I'm doing something that's going to take care of me. And that also could be in the context of community. You have, here we go again, you're pouring out over there, but now where's your community that pours into you? My God. You're always in meetings where, where you're the leader, but who's pouring into you? 
You're always setting up this so others can win. Who's setting up a room so that you can win? And, and this is what, this is what, this, I mean, Pastor Brendan say this all the time. If I'm always the smartest person in the room, then I'm, I, I'm, I'm finding myself in the wrong room. That's what I love about our staff. Come on, no, you're, you're, you got the expertise in this. Hey, begin to speak. You can't always live in rooms where you're the smartest person. That's something, there's something wrong there. It's either you're, you're walking in pride <laughs> or you're not setting yourself up to win. And it could be that God is saying it's time to unplug, time to unplug so that you can go glean in the right way. And this is why this is very, very important as I get ready to, to kind of close it down, because I want us to check our rhythms. I really do. I, I, I want us to check our rhythms in life where you take care of yourself. How are you treating yourself this week? How are you treating yourself? Well, what are you doing this week to take care of you, my friend? That, that's one of the best gifts you could give yourself. N not your spouse. No, hear me when I say this. Mm. Not, not what your spouse is doing for you. Not what your friend is doing for you. What are you doing for yourself this week? Could the gift of Sabbath be right there where God is saying that that's the gift? Give that to yourself and unplug. Give that to yourself and, and, and get off the treadmill for a few hours so that your brain can relax, so that you can be fully present in him. One of the best ways to catch up with God is to actually slow down. Let me say that again. If you want to catch up with what you want to catch up with God's pace in life, the best thing you can do is actually slow down. Let me read you this scripture in Colossians chapter one, verse 17 from the NIV. Colossians one, verse 17. It, it reads, it says, talking about Jesus here. He is before all things and in him, all things are held together going to be okay. He holds it together. Not you. You're not the savior. Your name is not Jesus Christ. You, 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 can I speak? You're Anthony. <laughs> and yes, you're a wonderful Anthony, but you're still not the savior. So you have to learn how to let some things go so that you can unplug. And that's the work. That's a rhythm in life that, 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 that it's going to be okay. For a day, for a few hours, <laughs> it's going to be okay. It's not. It's not going to be the end of the world. It's okay, so that you can receive the true gift that God has given you. Amen.